If a penetrating eye injury is noted or suspected, perform a rapid field test of visual acuity and document the findings. Vision measurement has to be simplified for battlefield use. Don't worry about charts. Determine which of the following the casualty can see. Read print, count fingers, hand motion, light perception. Remember, if vision is going down and the eye area is swelling rapidly, there may be a hemorrhage behind the eye and the casualty should be evacuated as soon as possible. This can happen with fragments that miss the eye but injure the orbit. He or she may permanently lose vision due to increased pressure in the eye if they don't get to a hospital as soon as possible. This is a laceration to the cornea of the eye, the clear part in front. Eye contents can leak out if you have an injury like this, and bacteria can get into the eye and cause infection. A small penetrating eye injury may look like this dark spot, where the clear part of the eye and the white part of the eye come together. The dark spot is a bit of iris, one of the pigmented parts from inside the eye that is trapped in the penetrating wound. Attempts to wipe this spot away can cause more of the iris to be pulled out of the eye. Infection inside the eye is always a bad thing. Corneal lacerations or penetrating eye injuries can cause infection and lead to permanent blindness. Ensure that 400 milligrams moxifloxacin tablet in the combat wound medication pack is taken if possible, or that IVIM antibiotics are given if oral moxifloxacin cannot be taken. Cover the eye with a rigid eye shield, not a pressure patch. A rigid shield will protect the eye from any pressure. Pressure could force the interior contents of the eye to come out. This is a bad thing. A rigid shield should be in first aid kits and medical sets. When only one eye has been injured, do not place a shield over the uninjured eye to prevent eye movement. Movement has not been shown to worsen the outcome for the injured eye. Blindness makes an otherwise ambulatory casualty a litter patient, and blindness is psychologically stressful. Rigid eye shields should be placed over both eyes only when you are sure, or at least strongly suspect, that both eyes have been injured. Tactical eyewear can be used to protect the eye if no eye shield is available. Use of tactical eyewear is an excellent way to prevent this type of injury from happening in the first place. In summary, remember to perform a rapid field test of visual acuity and document the findings. Cover the eye with a rigid eye shield, not a pressure patch, and administer antibiotics for all known or suspected eye injuries. Hey everyone, I'm Stefano and I want to be discussing proper application of a rigid eye shield in accordance with TRIC guidelines. Our first step is to conduct a rapid field assessment of the casualty's visual acuity. Please cover your unaffected eye. Can you read this card? I cannot. Can you read this card? I cannot. How many fingers am I holding up? I can't see it. After determining that the casualty's visual acuity is affected, we are going to apply a rigid eye shield. Please hold that in place. It is important to not apply a pressure dressing over the affected eye. Okay, let go. In a tactical situation, it is preferred to keep the unaffected eye uncovered. After securing the rigid eye shield, be sure to administer your casualties combat wound pill pack, specifically the 400 milligrams of moxifloxacin PO. Continue to reassess your intervention assess the casualties vitals and document all patient care on DD form 1380.